we're going to start drawing some parts, make some parts here that have a lot of uh, curves and arcs and holes in them. And there's um, a few things I want to go over uh, before we get to these drawings down here. First of all, center points are very, very critical into understanding uh, the size and location of these things. This um, cutout right here, using the center marks, you can count over three squares to the edge of here, right? One, two, three. So that tells you that the radius of this arc right here, the radius is 0.75. Radius is the distance from the center to the edge, right? The diameter would be double that. It's all the way across. However, we never dimension or refer to an arc as a diameter. If it's a partial circle, it's always going to be radius. Holes or complete circles, we refer to by diameter. You got it? When you are drawing in sketch mode in Inventor and you create a full circle and then you go to dimension it, by default, Inventor will dimension it as a diameter. If you make a, a, an arc, it will automatically dimension it as a radius. Those two are easily confused, so be sure you have it clear in your mind which you are entering when you're entering dimensions. Let's look at number nine here real quick. And um, they don't have a center mark on here for you, but we can kind of fig figure out probably where it is. And here's how. If you follow this arc up, when it gets at this intersection right here, that line is just getting ready to go straight up on this, this circle here, right? It's at this forest, farthest point, and you can imagine it's starting to come up and around. Same thing here. Where it intersects here, this is probably its, its lowest point. It's starting to come around here. So in other words, this is a quarter, exactly a quarter of a circle. Therefore, if we just extend this line straight up and extend this line straight over, that's where a center point would be on that circle. So when we draw that, that's where we're going to go. All right. So this circle right here, I count three squares. That means the radius, R, is 75.75. This one over here, this arc, is um, has a center mark. And you can see two squares over or two squares up. That tells us that it has a radius of what? Radius of two squares, which is 0.5. Take a look at that in Inventor, and I'll show you how darn easy it is. All right, I'm just going to whip this thing out pretty quick. We're just going to make a rectangle. And I believe it is two and a quarter inches wide. And how tall is that? An inch and a half? Is that right? Now, we could go extrude this the way it is, and then put a circle in later, and then cut that arc out. But actually, we can do it right now as well. We could just get the circle tool, and you know where we're going to click this thing? Right at that intersection. And that's going to give us that exact quarter of a circle, see? Right there's the center. Now, we can dimension the center of a circle. If we knew that the center of that circle, that or the hole, or whatever it's going to be, has to be a, a certain distance from uh, another point, so you can dimension it, dimension that center. But when we clicked on this intersection, we constrained it to that spot. It'll never move. Uh, if we try to dimension it and move it, it won't. It will get an error message. It, it's it's constrained. It's locked in there, so we don't need to worry about that. And you can see those arrows going clear across the circle, arrow to arrow, all the way across. That tells us that this is a radius or diameter. It's, it's diameter. Whenever you have a full circle, it's going to be diameter. Plus, it's kind of showing you here. It's diagramming the fact that 
this dimension represents the full diameter. But you said, well, Mr. Chandler, I thought when we we're doing arcs, partial circles, we do radius. Well, it isn't a partial circle yet. It's, it's a full circle right now. That thing is 0.75 radius. What is, in that, what is that in diameter? One and a half. Now, um, what we could do now is we could probably go ahead and extrude it and just extrude this part down here. And then the circle, this, the rest of that just disappear. Or if we wanted to, we could kind of make it look neat and go up here to the trim tool and trim away that extra part of the circle. Trim away that. Trim away that. And make it look like that. So now that's uh, just our partial circle. Now we still have another little um, curve up here we need to deal with. And we could do that just by clicking on a circle. Clicking a circle down here somewhere. And then putting a dimension on it. We know that that circle is how far down from the top. It's a half inch, two squares. How far is it from this edge? Also a half inch. And then how big is this thing? Well, the radius is half an inch, so the diameter is one. Then I can just trim it, and there's my arc right there. There's many ways to do things with Inventor. And let me show you a different way of doing it that's actually going to be pretty slick. Let's go ahead and just extrude this now. One inch. So... In manufacturing, there's a couple terms I want you guys to know that we use in Inventor. It's called fillet and round. A round is where you take a sharp corner, like the edge of your table there, and they round it off. That's kind of what we're going to be doing here. We're rounding that off. If you have two pieces of metal that were joined like in a T or an L, and you add extra welding rod, you know, melted metal in here, maybe ground it off to make it look nice. That's called a fillet because you filled it. Kind of remember it that way. Inventor, however, uses one tool, one feature, we call it, for both rounds and fillets. They just call it fillet. So this is not truly a fillet, but we're going to use the fillet tool and just click on that edge. And then just type in the di or the radius rather. Type in the radius. And there it is. That was a little easier than drawing circles and stuff, wasn't it? 